Hi there, my name's Simon Drew, and welcome to the Practical Stoic Podcast, where I give you practical Stoic advice for modern times. You can support the show by going to patreon.com forward slash Simon Drew. I also do one-on-one mindset coaching, and you can book in your first free consultation by going to risetothegoodlife.com forward slash coaching. On Facebook, you can join my group, The Practical Stoic Mastermind. But for now, enjoy this episode. Hi there, my name's Simon Drew, and welcome to The Practical Stoic Podcast. I recently received an email from a listener of the podcast, and he said this, Wisdom, justice, courage, and self-discipline. These are the pillars of Stoicism that I get. Please have a podcast or an interview about where compassion fits into the philosophy of Stoicism and why there is so little to say about it in the Stoic community. Or if there is, then I'm ignorant of where it fits in. So, I thought that this was an extremely valid question, and one that many of you may have asked at one time or another. And I think that this question really reflects why I don't believe that Stoicism can fully be explained with just four pillars of wisdom, justice, courage, and self-discipline. Because there is so much more to Stoicism, and if you define it as only four pillars, then there are other virtues and principles that can kind of fall through the cracks, like compassion, for example. And in this episode, I wanted to assure all of you that the Stoics absolutely did encourage us to be compassionate and to have empathy and love and kindness. And I know that if you get your information on Stoicism from chat groups on Facebook, for example, then at times it can seem like everyone is focusing on the part of Stoicism that says you shouldn't be hurt because it's only your opinions about what's being said that is hurting you. But not enough people focus on the part of Stoicism that calls for kindness and understanding. Because although much of what people feel is based on their perceptions, we should never seek to hurt others with our words or to be inharmonious in our communications with fellow people. In fact, to kick off this episode with a word from Seneca, he said, quote, Wherever there is a human being, there is an opportunity for kindness. End quote. All of the Stoics at one time or another taught with compassion. For example, Seneca was always talking about how inhumanely people treat their slaves, and about how horrible the entertainment in the Colosseum was, where people were being thrown to wild beasts and tortured in front of an audience. As I'll talk about soon, Marcus Aurelius believed that how we treated other people was a reflection of our true character. And he taught that we are all one group of humanity, and so we should care for each other as much as possible. Epictetus taught that to be an effective communicator and friend, we should be kind and understanding, and we should know the right time to speak and the right time to listen. And finally, Masonius Rufus taught that we should eat a diet mostly free from animals that are mass slaughtered, and that we should eat vegetables, fruits, and nuts in season, because that is the kinder and more virtuous way to eat. In fact, many of you will know that even Seneca was on a vegetarian diet for about a year of his life. So it's not necessarily that the Stoics weren't compassionate or that they didn't believe in making kind decisions, but it's just that we don't focus on those messages that often. And I'd like to focus on one of those messages right now by reading a quote from Epictetus that perfectly outlines, in my view, the compassionate side of Stoicism. He said, quote, One cannot pursue one's own highest good without at the same time necessarily promoting the good of others. A life based on narrow self-interest cannot be esteemed by any honourable measurement. Seeking the very best in ourselves means actively caring for the welfare of other human beings. Our human contract is not with the few people with whom our affairs are most immediately intertwined, nor with the prominent rich or well-educated but to all our human brethren, end quote. You know, that quote sounds like something that would have been said by the likes of Martin Luther King Jr. or Nelson Mandela or Abraham Lincoln, but it was said by Epictetus, a Stoic who lived much of his life as a slave and who was exiled for many years at a time. Epictetus understood the indignities of man, and yet he called for compassion, kindness, and the promotion of good. And I think that my favourite part of that quote is where he said that we cannot pursue our own highest good without at the same time promoting the good of others. 
He's basically saying that it is virtuous and right for us to fight for those who have less than us, and that we should be involved as much as we can in making the world a better place for more people. He's saying that kindness, compassion, and love are prerequisites for a good life. But that's just Epictetus. What about Marcus Aurelius? What did he say that could encourage us to have compassion and charity towards our fellow human beings? Well, what he taught was the idea of cosmopolitanism, which says that we are all interwoven into a larger community of humanity, and that your actions have a ripple effect that will hurt or harm this larger community. He said, quote, Constantly think of the universe as a single living being, comprised of a single substance and a single soul, and how all things issue into the single perception of this being, and how it accomplishes all things through a single impulse, and how all things work together to cause all that comes to be, and how intricate and densely woven is the fabric formed by their interweaving. End quote. I don't think that there is a more beautiful or poetic way to say that we are all interconnected, and if you can imagine that all people are your brothers and sisters, deeply connected to you in one way or another, then it's not hard to see that we should have compassion and empathy towards those who are suffering. We should seek to live in a way that doesn't bring down humanity, but rather in a way that lifts it up. We should be involved in charity, volunteering, fighting against tyranny, and promoting the general welfare of humanity. And Marcus Aurelius also went on to say, quote, A human being is formed by nature to benefit others. And when he has performed some benevolent action or accomplished anything else that contributes to the common good, he has done what he was constituted for, and has what is properly his, end quote. So, in other words, we were made for good, and we are acting both in our own best interests and in the best interests of other people when we do good, and when we are kind and compassionate towards our fellow human beings. Marcus Aurelius also taught that that which is not good for the beehive cannot be good for the bees. And I think that this is the perfect attitude to have whenever you're making a decision in life. Let's take kindness, for example. If everyone were unkind, then humanity would be in ruins. So if unkindness is bad for humanity, then it's also bad for me. So be kind. And now let's take our environment. Polluting and littering and ruining our surroundings is bad for humanity as a whole. So it's bad for me. And therefore, I should care about my choices with regards to how I look after my environment. Whenever you're deciding what to do... Think of Marcus Aurelius and decide to do only the things that would be good for humanity as a whole, because that's what's going to be good for you as well. And I want to end this episode with a quote from Seneca that will hopefully inspire you to be kind and compassionate in all your interactions with people in your life. He said, quote, Kindness forbids you to be overbearing towards your associates, and it forbids you to be grasping, In words and in deeds, and in feelings, it shows itself gentle and courteous to all men. It counts no evil as another's solely. And the reason it loves its own good is chiefly because it will someday be the good of another. End quote. You know, my favorite part of that quote is where he said that kindness counts no evil as another's solely. You know, Seneca taught that sometimes evil is found not in what we are doing, but in what we are not doing. So, to see other people in pain, and to see suffering in people and animals alike, and to do nothing based on the idea that some things are outside of our control, is not a very stoic response. The stoic response is to do whatever is best for humanity, and to always try our best to live in a way that promotes the welfare of others. And that means having compassion, charity, love, kindness, all of these beautiful virtues that are good for humanity and are good for us. And on that note, I'll talk to you next time. But until then, I hope that this episode has helped you on your rise to the good life. Ciao. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Practical Stoic Podcast. I hope it's been valuable for you. And if you'd like to support the show, then you can go to patreon.com forward slash Simon Drew. If you'd like to try mindset coaching with me, then you can book your first free consultation by going to rise to the forward slash coaching. 
To join the community, just go to Facebook and search for the Practical Stoic Mastermind. The links to all of these places are included in the show notes, but for now, this is Simon Drew signing out.